G'day and welcome back to RC Model Reviews. Today I'm testing two FPV antennas. Now, Joshua Bardwell tested a whole bunch of FPV antennas just recently, and uh, it reminded me that I'd had these pagodas laying around here. Well, not laying around, I've been using the damn things quite a lot. And I thought I should uh, do a follow up, perhaps an augmentation to Joshua's very, very good video. It's linked in the description of this video. Go and look at it if you haven't already seen it. It is a really good video, and I know how much time he must have put in on that because this video has taken me the best part of a week and I'm only testing two. Uh, he tested a whole bunch. So what have I got here? I've got the TBS Triumph antenna. There we go. It's quite unusual. You don't, you know, it's not the typical cloverleaf antenna. And the real strength of this thing is it's real strength. It is built like a brick dunny. And you can this, you know, you could run over this with the truck and it would still work. So if you plan to do FPV on the freeway, that's your antenna of choice, I've got to tell you. Um, also, here we've got the pagoda antenna. Now this was sent to me quite some time ago and I've been flying it also a lot and the reason I haven't done this video to date is because I really couldn't believe my eyes in many ways. This antenna is such a kick-ass antenna, I think, how can it work so well for something that's been basically developed and released into the open source um, and it's so different to everything else? What's going on here? So I wanted to make sure that I wasn't dreaming, wasn't missing something and no, I'm not. It's a really good antenna. Now, it doesn't mean it's better than this. And it doesn't mean this is better than that. They're two different antennas with slightly different characteristics. And which one suits you is going to depend on what you fly, where you fly it, and how you fly. For some people, this will be the antenna of choice. For others, this will have a whole lot of advantages. So what I intend to do in this video is put them side by side. Do some scientific, some objective testing. And for that, I've built a little rig here. I've got a 200 milliwatt FPV transmitter. I've put a 10 decibel attenuator on it so that we're only getting 20 milliwatts of power out of it. And I, at the other end, I have got a, a Hobby King type FPV receiver, and I've run the RSSI signal from that out to a multimeter so I can measure, accurately measure just how much signal strength we're getting. And I've also hooked up a DVR so I can record the signal that's coming from the transmitter rig. So I'm going to compare the two antennas side by side. We're going to look at the Triumph on each end and the Pagoda on each end and just see which one really works the best. Now, obviously, these scientific tests only go so far, and many times when you get into the real world, the stuff you measure doesn't quite work out the way you expect. So what I've also done is some test flights. I've taken a quad. Unfortunately, I don't have the lovely environment that Joshua's got to test in. I only have a crappy old runway, which doesn't offer many challenges for an FPV signal. So I have tried to get around that by flying low, by flying a long way away, well, 500 metres away, um, by pirouetting to make sure it's nice and circular, the radiation pattern, all that sort of stuff, and by flying directly overhead the receiver with the aircraft so that I'm lining up the null points of these antennas, trying to provoke them into giving a bad result. So you'll see that a little later on in this video. There you go. Now, the, as I say, these are open source. You can build them yourself. That's another big bonus for these things. But let's get on with the testing and um, grab a coffee, sit down, and I hope you learn something and are not too bored to tears. Okay, now here we go. Excuse the, as I say, the outdoor audio, and I'm going to go now and start the tests. Uh, as I say, we've got the uh, Triumph antenna on both ends. Right, now the image is pretty good. It's not a bad picture, actually, and we've got an RSSI here at the moment of 0 0.98, 0 0.98, which is pretty damn good. So that's a, a nice, strong signal, and it's pretty clear. I'm going to do the uh, the reflected signal, the test of the circular polarization now with this sheet of copper. I'm going to bring it slowly up to the antenna and it should cause some changes to the... It should be performing pretty well actually. Here we go, that's the worst I can get just there, as you can see. Now the RSSI figure will be showing that, so we can see what we're getting. But that's that's still quite a flyable picture with that, that level of um, Reflected signal, quite nice, not too bad. And I say this is 20 milliwatts at maybe 150 meters. Okay, now what I want to test is the angle at which we can lean this Triumph antenna over. Got a Triumph at the other end, Triumph at this end. The angle I can lean it over before we really start seeing a noticeable loss of signal, because that's going to basically define a little bit our toroidal shape of our radiation pattern. So I'm just going to try and keep out of the way, and I'll lean it over until we get the grain on there semi-flexible coax, so actually what I'll do is I'll lean it to try and do the same angle. That's about a 45 degree angle. 45 degree angle there, and you can see on our RSSI we are, wow, 0.994. <laughs> it's actually getting more gain at that angle. Uh, so the 
Triumph has a very good circularly polarized, it's very omnidirectional, which is great. So uh, what I'll do now is we'll go and try the same thing with the Pagoda at each end. Okay, now we have the Pagoda on each end now, and I'm expecting to see a higher gain from these antennas, because in my experience, they have really good gain, but they do have a bit of a hole in the top of them, which is where they get their gain from. So let's go over and see how this is stacking up. Pagoda at both ends. Here we go, our RSSI is 1.0, 1.1 basically, which is pretty damn good. That's actually a whole lot better. Well, not a whole lot, but it is noticeably better than the uh, than the Triumph antenna was. So we do have more gain. That picture looks pretty sweet, actually. Now I'm going to do the reflected wave test, the test of the uh, axial ratio with the reflective sheet, which will give us a. They've called it a multi-pathing. Let's see how badly that breaks up if we can break it up. Ooh. <laughs> We're not getting much at all there, that's about the worst of it there. Whoa, that shows that this antenna is really well, it has a very high axial ratio, that is fantastic. These reflected waves are really not having much effect at all. It's like, woohoo. So just to remind you, what's happening here is we have a right-hand circularly polarized wave coming along, hitting our antenna, producing a signal. I have a piece of copper strip which bounces the signal back, which means that the reversed signal comes out. This is going to be left-hand polarized, which if this has a if it's a poor performing antenna from the perspective of rejecting reverse polarized signals, then you would get a lot of change in the picture intensity, but nothing. And the RSSI isn't changing much either. That's woohoo, that's pretty damn good. I am impressed. So far the pagoda is working just as I thought. Now, here comes the real test. I'm going to tip this pagoda antenna over and see how, much, how big the hole is at this, the top because it's getting the gain from somewhere. It's giving us a stronger signal. But I think it is because the torus shape is actually a bit flatter and has a bigger hole in the top. So when I bend this antenna over, I expect to see a reduction in the... Yeah, it's not bad. I've got to admit, let's do 45 degrees like we did before with the other one. Is that 45, you tell me? Our RSSI has dropped out. Oh, our multimeter turned off. Let's turn it back on again. Our RSSI is down to 0.93. So yeah, I think that is a bigger drop in terms of percentages than we had with the antenna. So we are not seeing it much in the way of grain on the picture because we've still got quite a strong signal but it does reinforce to me that this antenna has a bigger hole in the top. That's where it gets its gain from. So there's a superior axial ratio but not by much. The Triumph performs pretty well. So what's going to happen is I think that when we fly this we're going to see a better performance when the if you're flying a model that's level and you're working at the side lobes of this antenna as to say it's seeing the signal coming in this way but if we get the model up on its end or to banked heavily to one side we're going to see some dropouts because of this big hole in the top so it's going to be an interesting comparison the triumph or the pagoda for range the pagoda seems to be ahead of the triumph at the moment but that's not the only criteria and now we're going to do some flying we're going to check out and see what happens when we put these things in the air do some real world stuff because this is techie stuff we've done some very very uh, objective measurements and we've seen how things work both these antennas are real sparklers they perform really well let's go and fly and see which one really delivers on the promise okay so I went and flew the both antennas around roughly the same course this is the test flight with the pagoda antenna as you can see there pagoda antenna on both ends so the idea was to take off fly to one end of the airfield fly back down to the other end and just look for things like dropouts multi-pathing and generally the range provided so here we go, we're now heading down towards the north end of the airfield. This is the Pagoda antenna. Notice it's, there's a few occasional flickers, but it's pretty damn good. Now the total distance down here is about 500 meters. So we just carry on along. And I tried to stay fairly low because that gives us an indication of we're right in the Fresnel zone. So we're going to get all the multi-pathing around. And I just did an orbit of the windsock here just to get different orientations to the Transmitter, there we go, so that's all very good, perfectly, wonderfully flyable. Now we're at about 400 meters, and go about another 100 meters down here, and then turn back. And again, I did a full 360 to make sure that it's got a nice circular transmission pattern. This is the Pagoda, now that's brilliant, that's totally flyable. So now I come right down, and I'm going to fly past in front of the hangars on the right hand side there, and that's a really bad place for multi-pathing. We get reflected signals off the hangers coming back and hitting the antenna on the receiver so flickering here is an indication of multi-pathing or, or poor 
axial ratio, and it's pretty damn good. There's the occasional flick, and we've got a bit of noise going through there. We're in the Fresnel zone, as I say, but now we're down about coming on for 450 meters in the other direction. So these are pretty good tests, and I'll do a turnaround here, and we'll fly back. And when I fly back, I'm going to do something because I believe the the uh, pagoda antenna has a much bigger hole in it at the ends of the antenna. I'm going to fly over the video recorder, fly over the antenna on the receiver. So it'll fly directly over the top. So we're going to expose both antennas end on. So we should see a null. We should see a lot of snow coming up as I fly directly over the top. And any minute now. Right, there we go. That's where the null's coinciding. You see we lost quite a bit of signal there. And now we come down and I will fly around again. This is close proximity. So And we've got these hangers there. Very little in the way of multi-pathing coming in, just the occasional flicker. That's, and remember, there's no diversity here, so you're just getting single receiver, single transmitter. And that's pretty good going. I'm quite happy with that. There is the uh, receiver, by the way, if anyone's interested, that tripod. And now just come around and land, if you can call it landing. Right, now I'm repeating the flight with a Triumph antenna on both ends, on the quad and on the receiver antenna. So this is... Triumph to Triumph, exactly the same. I tried to fly as close as possible to the original flight. So again, I'm heading out here. Notice a bit more breakup a bit earlier on there. And now we're going to head down the full 500 metres down the runway. And it's not bad. It's pretty clean. But um, I'm seeing, so you get a bit of break up here. I think we see that the range of the Triumph is, is or doesn't have as so much gain. Notice how we're getting a lot more break up now. We're getting further away. And as we pass through the Fresnel zone, because the axial ratio is, not, ratio is not as good, so it doesn't reject the multipathing, and the sensitivity is not quite so good. The gain isn't so good. So notice as we go around the flagpole here, um, we're getting pretty low. We're losing a lot of signal because it just doesn't have the same gain as the pagoda. And out here, yeah, we're getting to the really getting sort of you know a lot of break up. I didn't do a full circuit here because um, I forgot. But then we'll come back and we'll fly in front of the hangars and we'll check out the multipathing again. I'm flying low here to try and. Uh, exacerbate the effects of multi-pathing and here we go look at this now we're coming along in front of the hangers and you can see there is a bit of multi-pathing off those hangers we're getting signal bounced off the hangers two sets of signals so the axial ratio of the triumph is nowhere near as good as the pagoda because we're getting that flickering caused by the multi-pathing now I go down here and again I'll turn around at about the 450 meter mark and I, I will also do the climb up and fly directly overhead now I expect the triumph to perform better in this test with the uh, pagoda, we had a almost complete loss of signal as I flew overhead and the two antennas were basically pointing at each other. With the Triumph, I think because you can see it has a lower gain, therefore it probably has a more spherical radiation pattern. Therefore I don't expect to see the same loss of signal when I fly overhead. But let's try it out and see what happens. As you can see, it's, uh, it's not bad. I mean, it's perfectly flyable. And both of these antennas are pretty damn good to be totally honest. Here we go. Let's gain a bit of height and fly over the camera, which as you know is in the the middle of the section up here, and I'll fly by it again so you can see where it is, not the camera, I should say the receiver with the DVR. So I'm going to fly over the top of it now, coming up, and you can see, well, yeah, really, not much of anything. <laughs> so I think my theory about the radio or the radiation pattern of the Pagoda being quite flat and that of the Triumph being quite spherical really does pan out. So here we go, come in for another landing, if you can call it a landing. Again, notice here we're getting a bit of multi-pathing right in front of these hangers here. We're getting a lot of signal bouncing off those hangers. So the axial ratio really shows the importance of that when you're dealing with reflected signals off metal objects like you'd get in a, in a car park or flying around large buildings. And there's me and my observer. Ooh, good landing, eh? Okay, so which one of these would I buy? Well, I, I'd buy either. I mean, these are available from, because it's open source, uh, Martin, Martin has made this open source. You can buy them from a whole lot of different places. You can build your own. Uh, you can do whatever you like. So this is this can be a very cheap option, a very cheap option. Uh, this, of course, is a bit more spendy, but these are incredibly rugged. They're very strong, hard to break them, really, really tough as old beans. These, of course, if you just leave fly them like this, then you're likely to get one of these plates bent at an angle to the other. That will radically um, reduce the performance. So they really, it's nice to have them encapsulated. There are 3D covers available on the market. I'm not sure what effect the 3D covers have on the tuning of the antenna because I noticed that in Justin... Uh, Justin's videos that the what was it the teardrop or something or the pair, the, the one that um, I think it was B Rota did which was one of these with a plastic cover on it performed awfully it was terrible 
possibly because that plastic cover detuned the antenna so it was nowhere near on the right frequency. And I don't think that the B-Rater would have the gear to test that. So they probably built it, but in putting a plastic cover on them may have detuned the snot out of it. So that's an important thing to look at, whether you, you know, how you case them and what effect the case has. So I'm going to fly mine naked. In fact, what I have done on one of mine is just put a little bit of heat shrink around the top there just to hold those plates uh, in rough alignment. But the other way to do it is to put some kind of dielectric in there. But even then, if you put foam between those plates, it will slightly affect the tuning, unfortunately. So um, perhaps Martin can run through the simulator with various dielectrics between the plates and see what changes might need to be made to support, for example, um, polystyrene foam, hard plastic, whatever, um, just to make sure it's tuned to the right frequency. Now, I did perform these tests with a channel that was very close to 5.8, 5.806, I think one of the race band channels, trying to put it in the middle of the band. And I haven't tested it each end of the band, so I don't know how um, sharply either of these antennas are tuned. I think they claim quite a wide range for this. Maybe, I'm not sure about the Pagoda, but it's one thing to consider. If you want me to, I'll test them at the low end of the band and at the high end of the band and see if there's any difference. But uh, as uh, Justin will point out, there is a lot of time involved in doing these tests. This has taken me most of the week to do all these tests, the flight tests, the had to wait for an observer, and the various measurement tests, and just setting up, preparing, and doing it twice, because the first time there's always problems. So yeah, it's, it's a really big investment, as others will tell you, doing this type of test with antennas. That's why I only did these two, because in, uh, in Justin's tests, he discovered that uh, the, you know, these were the two, or two of the three, fairly good performing antennas. Now I don't have the other ones, I don't have the Axial from, or the Axie from uh, uh, Luminaire, and of course I've got an Aonway, but I've tested those before, and I just wanted to compare these two, because I think these are probably the two leading antennas on the market at the moment, if you're looking for top performance. So there you go. Um, if you've got questions, comments, put them in the usual place. I know there's already built it yourself videos on these things on the interwebs, but I was thinking I might actually try just uh, knocking up one myself right from scratch making my own little circuit boards because I've got plenty of circuit board here and I can probably do a video, a how-to video showing you how to etch your own boards and put it together. It may not be as high performance but hey if you just want a project something we can do if you're interested but you can, you can buy these, they're open source, you buy the little pieces of thing and the jigs available and everything so it may not be worth the effort. You tell me, I do not know. Anyway that's it, time for me to clear the bench, get on with something else. Thanks for watching, bye for now.